I was present almost at the creation by virtue of the leadership of Sam Erickson, one of my uh, dear friends who shared with me uh, his uh, vision, his activity in the Christian Legal Society in light of the fall of the Iron Curtain led naturally to Macedonian calls from so many different places, especially in Eastern Europe. So I was in conversation uh, in those early days with uh, the founder, uh, Sam Erickson, and very shortly thereafter uh, went on the board. Sam saw it as, as a very vitally important task, as important as the effort for religious liberty was and is here in the United States. Uh, he saw the need in these, especially in the emerging post-communist world uh, countries, uh, Bulgaria and Albania and so forth, Romania. So he caught uh, the vision and dedicated the rest of his life to the cause of uh, international religious freedom so the gospel can be preached. I've simply been a volunteer for, for many years, a member of uh, the board, and uh, trying to help in any way that I can through uh, time, uh, treasure talent to the extent that there's any talent there. So I've been privileged to uh, step in for our wonderful CEO, Brent McBurney, uh, representing him in one European conference fairly recently of uh, individuals from 17, evangelical Christians from 17 different countries, really focusing hard on the challenges of religious liberty in an increasingly secular Europe. There are lots of good stories, there are lots of success stories, but if we want the gospel to be preached, we have to pave the way and to clear out the obstacles, the legal obstacles uh, to the, the preaching uh, and sharing of, of the word. To create a network of Christian lawyers of support and fellowship, of encouragement, and at times very direct support. We're working right now on a very important issue in Nepal. Uh, a new government uh, edict has uh, forbidden uh, the uh, community to celebrate Christmas. It's being eradicated uh, as a holiday, and so working with Christian lawyers in Nepal we are encouraging and helping, including supporting financially the effort that's culminating in, in a, a case in the Supreme Court of Nepal. So we don't substitute ourselves for them. We rather encourage, we network, and we do what we can to respond to those Macedonian calls that come our way. We need help. So we in the United States are uh, blessed in this land of liberty, always with challenges, but we have so many opportunities. We have so much freedom in this country, and may that always be so. May we always be vigilant. But as you know, that's just not true. In virtually, well, 75% of the world's people live under states of oppression to a greater or lesser extent. And we want to help. That's what Advocates International is here to do. So we help try to create and then preserve a culture of liberty, at least so that the gospel can be proclaimed. Time after time, what we see is that through the lifting up the values of freedom, of human dignity, that was, well, where does this come from? <laughs> What's the basis for this? And of course, the basis is so deeply biblical that we're created in the image of God. And so when you look at the theological and biblical foundation of what it is that we are espousing in terms of human freedom, including the first freedom here in the United States, religious freedom, it opens the door to sharing a worldview that's very, very powerful, and frankly, it's very winsome. We work with one another and we encourage one another and then in turn we work with the rising generation to encourage the next generation to come alongside us. We learn from them but also to encourage them and to teach and to share our own set of experiences and so that we we'll walk more fully uh, in the light as he is in the light. Well, there's so many ways to be involved in uh, Advocates International. First, that we hope that you will be part of our prayer list and our prayer community. Every month, 
we share the specific needs that have come to us from literally around the world. And so I mentioned Nepal as, as one example, but there are many examples throughout Africa and Asia. And one of the things that you have the assurance of doing by virtue of being on that prayer list is you will know, you will have a United Nations report, but from a Christian perspective, that this is what is going, this is what's going on in the world. This is what the needs are in a hurting and, fall, and fallen world. And then there's specific opportunities then to become engaged, especially for lawyers. But for those who are non-lawyers to encourage us to be able to do the kinds of things that we seek to do to help others through financial support. So get on our list, get on our mailing list, and you will receive hard copy. You can go into our website at Advocates International, but you can become involved even if you've never set foot in a law school. Although we are a network of Christian lawyers around the world in well over 120 countries around the world, including in some very, very Islamic countries. So it can be dangerous for those good people, but you can become involved through prayer by being on our mailing list, but also you can, even if you've never gone to law school, you can be supporting this effort, including financially. Well, I'm flourishing in freedom. I've had the opportunity over time to do many different uh, things in my calling of, uh, of uh, a lawyer uh, and as uh, a judge, but this is my ministry, and I love being involved in Advocates International in particular uh, because of my commitment, and uh, it's a longstanding commitment and a sense of calling to promoting uh, religious liberty here at home and around the world. The world is very dark, and it's increasingly dark. And so it's all the more important for us here in the United States with all the blessings of liberty, even with our challenges and, and with the lack of civility and people yelling at one another, to nonetheless realize that the baseline here in the United States is liberty. That is not true in so much of the world, but we can all help and do our part. We shouldn't just sit comfortably in the pews we should be engaged and we don't necessarily have to go to Nepal, but we can encourage as we do missionaries, we can encourage those who do and who are fighting right on the front lines for a culture of freedom.